Welcome back. In the chapter of health care of the community, in today's video, we are going to discuss about health care delivery system in India. The health care system has been developed for the delivery of the health care services. So the health care system, why did we uh, discover this health care system? or it was developed it was developed for the delivery of healthcare services one of the simplest model has been shown here that includes the healthcare system includes input output healthcare services healthcare delivery system so guys we have input Input are all, uh, for example, input are the problems, okay, the health problems. Then we have certain services for this problem and we are delivering this service using a particular system. And what will be the result? The result is nothing but the output. So now I will explain you using this model. You can see here input. Input is nothing but the health status or the health problem of the community input input is the problem what is the problem the health status the health problems of that community the health demands of that community and then it also includes the resources so we see that resources they are always limited to meet the many health needs therefore it is also one sort of a problem right so our input is including the resources which are always limited to meet the needs of the health the priorities will should always be uh, set for these so we see that uh, the inputs also include the resources which is the money manpower and time resources includes money manpower and time so guys what did we see in input in input we have the health status the health problems and the resources the resources includes money manpower and time okay now we move on to so we are done with we are done with input we saw input next health care services the health care services they are designed to meet the health needs of the community so the health care services why are they designed to meet the health needs of the community in order to fulfill the inputs these services are designed these services include preventive curative and promotive care so we see that in the health services, we are providing the community the preventive care, promotive care and curative care. Next, we have the health care system which is providing all these services. It includes the public sectors. So, the public sectors are, uh, you know, those uh, government uh, organizations, institutes and then we have uh, private sectors we know many private hospitals and then the indigenous system of medicine all the government sectors come under this public sector all the private sector next we have private sector then the indigenous system of medicine which is ayush ayush is ayurveda uh, yoga yunani siddha and homeopathy the other system of medicine which is providing these healthcare services it plays it, this system also plays a major role in providing the healthcare to the community next we have voluntary health agencies and national health programs certain voluntary health agencies and the national health programs are also providing the health care to the community so these are delivery systems health care delivery systems and lastly the output i told you input are the problems just to make it you know simpler i'm telling you input mm, those are the health problems and the health status so what will the output be output is the solution right Solution is the change in the health status of the community. How can you assess the change in the health status of the community? By measuring the life saved, by the disease prevented and also by measuring the life expectancy of the people. If it is increased, it shows that the healthcare services are uh, good and the healthcare system is providing the good health services. So this was all about the healthcare system. 
so from the parks textbook we have this model right uh, the input which includes the health status of or the health problems of the community and the resources which are uh, more likely to be always you know a uh, scanty and then the services health services are curative preventive and promotive and then what are all the healthcare delivery systems they include public sector private sector voluntary indige indigenous includes ayush and then we have voluntary sector and lastly the ch what is the output we see the change in the health status of the community okay so this was the model the simplest model which was uh, developed for the delivery of the healthcare services now let us uh, have a discussion on the application of the model okay now in the upcoming slides we will discuss the application of the model starting with health status okay let us discuss each of it in detail health status an assessment of the health status or the health problems of the uh, you know the community it is the first basic requisite for developing any healthcare service we need to know what is the problem so that uh, the services can be framed to meet the needs of that uh, you know the felt need of the community or the problems of the community have to be dealt for understanding the problems we first have to assess the you know for developing the services we first have to know the health status as well as the health problem of the community the health status can be uh, ascertained or uh, by using the morbidity mortality statistics or the demographic profile of the population so let us uh, discuss uh, the india's uh, you know the demographic profile wherein there is a large population base now we are going to study the healthcare delivery system for that first we have to assess what are the health problems uh, and the health status okay the health status and health problems have to be determined and what are the resources available these are the three points right now the first thing we are going to deal about the health status to ascertain the health status we are going to do a demographic profile study of the population okay here in india we get a large population base so we always know that the birth rate is very high okay uh, so the large population base and the proportion of illiterates population is close to 26% recent studies have shown it is uh, spike to 34.62 percent uh, so we see that uh, the illiterate population in india approximately the one fourth of the population is illiterate so the illiteracy level is very high and also the dependency ratio is uh, approaching to 53 percent so the dependency ratio of almost more than 50 percent they are economically uh, you know they are uh, not productive so they are completely dependent on this productive members they are almost dependent on these uh, few productive members of the community and the dependency ratio is 53 so more likely uh, that's a very big problem if the dependency ratio is too much imagine uh, there are two kids 0 to 15 years there are two, under 0 to 15 years there are two kids the geriatric group uh, above 40 years and also are uh, two of them so uh, the dada and the dadi the grandparents and the two kids and only one father earning so the dependency four people are dependent on him plus if the wife is not working again the other wife so five people are the dependent five people are dependent on just one earning man so he is economically productive the rest of them are not productive so the dependency ratio in india is 53 almost more than 50 percent of the population is dependent on more than 50 percent is dependent okay so it is dependency ratio is also very high the mortality profile i told you two things you have to measure first is the demographic profile the population and then the mortality profile to assess the death rates okay the life expectancy is comparatively increasing uh, there is 67.5 years life expectancy because of their advancement in the health services which are provided 
so the better uh, you see life expectancy is going up to 67.5 years so this was uh, about the in the past few de- uh, in the past few decades we have seen that uh, there is a notable improvement in the health status of the population so uh, th- this was about the health status how did we ascertain the health status by measuring the demographic profile and the mortality profile and you know uh, the mortality profile it has been recorded that 67 years for the males and 70 years for the females during 2020 recent study it showed that the um, 2020 studies showed that in the males it is 67 years females are living up to the age of 70 years on an average now we move on to the health problems so we are de- uh, we are done with the health status so we see guys in inputs we are going we are discussing in detail about this we studied about the health status in health status we have to see the demographic profile and the mortality profile next we are going to deal about the health problems the health problems the health problems so uh, you know they can be conveniently grouped under the following headings they include the communicable diseases the communicable disease problems those are malaria tb diarrheal diseases acute respiratory tract infections leprosy filaria aids etc so the malaria which continues to be a major problem health problem in india Uh, although the total malaria cases has declined compared to the previous year still the uh, you know uh, falciparum the malaria which is caused by p falciparum has increased so this we can see that uh, during uh, 2019 there was uh, 0.34 million cases of malaria and 73 deaths were also notably uh, recorded so the communicable diseases we have malaria tb tb one uh, one fifth of the world accounts for one fifth of the world incidents major public health uh, problem every year 2.2 million people will be dying because of uh, 2.2 million people develop tb out of which uh, many die okay uh, 2.2 million will develop tb and they are uh, highly infectious okay and then we have uh, diarrheal diseases which is a major cause of mortality morbidity in the children who are less than 5 years of age and the acute respiratory tract infections which is a major cause of mortality and morbidity again in the children below 5 years of age uh, and we also had this covid 19 right in india uh during it's a pandemic also you can mention in communicable diseases you can add on covid 19 as well which was dated 19 feb 2021 wherein 1.1.09 uh, million cases were uh, recorded and uh, you know we had 156000 uh, deaths due to covid 19 okay next you can also add on uh, the leprosy leprosy which is an another important public health program in india and then we have public health problem in india next we have filariasis which is uh, remaining as an endemic in about uh, many districts and states in india and then we have aids uh, the problem is quite stable now but it is estimated that by the end of year 2017 there will be about 2.1 million positive hiv cases in the country and then uh, we also have the other diseases like meningitis viral hep- uh, hepatitis japanese encephalitis dengue fever enteric fever all of these are the communicable diseases the parasitic inf- uh, parasitical infestations etc so this was the health problems regarding the communicable diseases moving on to the non communicable diseases they include the diabetes mellitus 
cardiovascular diseases cancer and we have stroke chronic lung diseases they have emerged as a major public health problem because of the aging population and environmentally driven changes in behavior we know the cardiovascular diseases because there is a lot of sedentary lifestyle and also the dietary patterns of people now the modernized dietary patterns have completely changed because of the lifestyle changes there is a, a surge in the Uh, health problems public health problems that is a major uh, you know increase in the non communicable diseases has been seen like that of uh, diabetes cardiovascular diseases stroke cancer cataract refractive errors etc okay so this was the non communicable diseases moving on to the nutritional problems guys the nutritional problems that is protein energy malnutrition nutritional anemia low birth weight babies and xerophthalmia all of these uh, are uh, you know uh, this uh, including the iodine deficiency disorders so let us see some of the nutritional problems that is protein energy malnutrition because of the insufficiency of the food uh, the insufficiency of the food is leading to this protein energy malnutrition in the uh, children that is uh, they will contract uh, there is squashy occur marasmus which is more frequently seen okay marasmus is comparatively more fre- uh, frequent than squashy occur then we have the nutritional anemia which is of the highest prevalence in uh, women and children okay uh, you know in india about one half of the non pregnant women and the children are estimated to suffer from anemia and 50% of the pregnant women are anemic you know that's sad the 50% of the pregnant women in india are anemic and then uh, we also have the low birth weight babies uh, the maternal malnutrition and anemia is also responsible for this uh, low birth weight babies then we have xerophthalmia that is uh, about uh, you know uh, we also have this uh, deficiency of vitamin a resulting in xerophthalmia and uh, keratomalacia has also been a major cause of nutritional blindness especially in the children then we have the iodine deficiency disorders idd where the goiter and other iodine deficiency disorders are highly endemic in the sub himalayan regions iodine deficiency in these himalayan regions they are uh, highly endemic okay in iodine deficiency disorders the goiter and other iodine deficiency disorders moving on uh, to the endemic uh, you know environmental problems the environmental problems include the lack of safe water the lack of safe water prevent uh, primitive methods of excreta disposal so we know that because of the population explosion urbanization and industrialization there is a, you know a hazard to the water as well as the food chain so the provision of the safe water supply the sanitation services is all is it a great uh, you know task and then we have this uh, primitive method of excreta disposal people uh, had this uh, you know the uh, open defecation was uh, practiced a lot and the dispo- excreta disposal was not done properly uh, they used to you know the septic tanks were created and they used to carry it uh, empty it often and it was lots of uh, you know this uh, new uh, water seal latrines were not introduced during that period so the primitive excreta disposal was one of the environmental problem for developing me ma- major uh, you know um, health problems during the initial days and next we have population problems like the annual growth, growth rate is about uh, 1.2 percent currently the growth rate is 1.6 percent the current uh, value okay that is 2024 and then uh, the population problems the annual growth is about 1.2 percent according to the textbook value so this was about the health problems so we have uh, uh, almost in detail uh, discussed about the health problems moving on to the resources so guys uh, health problems under health problems what did we see under health problems we saw communicable diseases non communicable diseases we saw nutritional disorders environmental disorders uh, environmental sanitation problems uh, then we have population problems next moving on uh to the resources so we are done with inputs health problems very simple communicable non communicable nutritional environmental etc 
and then we are moving on to the resources which is money manpower and time so the resources they have to be met uh, so that the health needs of the community uh, can be uh, you know the health needs of the community can be met therefore we have to assess the resources uh, the resources include the what did we see money manpower and time let us see what we have here the resources money money under money what do we have uh, money uh, india is spending about 3% of the gdp on health and family welfare development so the money india is spending about 3% of the gdp on health and family welfare development and the manpower manpower are the you know uh, the grassroot level uh, health workers and then the physicians all of those includes the health manpower that is the asha um, anm auxiliary nurse midwife mpw health assistant male and female trained dai nurses doctors uh, you know the functions of each of them we are going to discuss in the next videos for now remember the manpower includes asha anganwadi workers uh, you know this uh, anm mpw health assistant trained dais nurses doctors all of them are under the manpower time the proper use of the man hours so this asha worker she has uh, so many home visits to do she has to uh, you know check the immunization schedules the um, pregnant women and everything mch care uh, so the asha worker has to uh, focus on these things rather than just writing records so the time utilization how to uh, you know utilize the time properly and give uh, you know high importance to the uh, the need based on the need she has to manage the time so also the proper use of the man hours is very important so this was all about the inputs which we studied the health status health problems resources health status health problems resources very clear now we are moving on to the healthcare services so guys in the healthcare services why are the healthcare services are designed they are designed to meet the health needs of the community now the healthcare services what did we study preventive promotive curative the purpose of healthcare service is to improve the health status of the people what is the purpose why do we have this preventive promotive curative healthcare service it is to improve the health status of the population the list of health services found in report of world health organization planning of public health services so we have this list of uh, services they are found in the reports of world health organizations planning of public health services clear guys uh, so uh, the healthcare services we have this uh, you know healthcare services how they are the uh, broad agreement is such that the services should be uh, they have to be comprehensive they have to be made accessible to the people they should be universally accepted they should provide the scope for the community's participation and they should be at a cost such that the community as well as the country can afford in the previous video we studied regarding the you know technical uh, support wherein uh, uh, in including the primary health care uh, all the health services whether it is a primary health care or to the uh, you know the other uh, health care services they have to be such that it should be accessible to the people it should be adaptable it should be affordable and easily accessible to the people next moving on to the healthcare delivery systems uh, the healthcare delivery systems are designed or intended to deliver the healthcare services so the healthcare delivery systems uh, which we are going to discuss in detail in our next slide only remember we are designing it to deliver the care, uh, care uh, healthcare services lastly we have the output output is nothing but the changed health status of the people the lives saved and the diseases prevented so this was all about the model now let us focus on the healthcare delivery systems in india which are intended to deliver the healthcare services so we have public health sector public health sector we have healthcare workers and hospitals of public health workers and hospitals public hospitals and we have insurance scheme and other agencies under public health sector and we have private sector indigenous system of medicine which is nothing but ayush certain voluntary health agencies national health programs 
Now let us discuss uh, in detail about each of them or the subdivisions of each of them. Then uh, we are going to discuss about, uh, you know, the functions of each of them in the next videos. So starting with the public sector. So what are the healthcare delivery systems? Public, private, indigenous, voluntary, national health program. What are those? Public, private, indigenous. These three are fine. Public uh, allopathic, you can remember. Private allopathic plus home, all indigenous, uh, pub, uh, indigenous public and private are also there. Uh, for now, you remember public, private and then indigenous. Three are done. Next two are, uh, we have voluntary health agency and national health program. Voluntary, okay. This is voluntary health agencies, NGOs and so on. And uh, the national health programs. Let us start with public sector. In the public sector, we have healthcare workers and hospitals at the village grassroots level. Let me uh, just zoom in for you guys to see it better. In the public sector, we have healthcare workers and hospitals at the village or grassroots level, guys. We have VHG, Village Health Guide. And ASHA, the full form of ASHA is Accredited Social Health Activist. We have local DAIs, Anganwadi centers contain Anganwadi workers. Followed by we have subcenter, PHC, CHC, district hospital and lastly the medical college. So what is the, you know, the hierarchy? We have village. At the village level, we have village health guide. Asha worker, one uh, uh, Asha, so we have Asha worker and one local Dai for particular village. Okay, village health guide, Asha and local Dai. This is at the village level. And then in the village level only, there are two things. Okay, first one is these three and the, in, uh, and the Anganwadi center will have the Anganwadi worker. Next, moving on, we have uh, the sub center. Okay, in the village, we have village level, then uh, subcenter followed by PHC, then CHC, that is at the district level. And next we have district hospitals and medical colleges. Subcenter, PHC, CHC, district hospital and medical colleges. Moving on to the insurance schemes, we have ESI scheme, LIC scheme and the other agencies include defense hospitals and separate railway hospitals. So this is the public sector. Under public sector, the government sectors, we have village health guide, ASHA worker, local DAI and Anganwadi worker. Then we have PHC. CHC subcenter, PHC, CHC, district hospital, medical college, and uh, this completes that. And then we have insurance schemes includes ESI and LIC. Other agencies are defense hospitals and we have railway hospitals. Next, we have the private sector. Private sectors include the private hospitals, clinics, nursing homes, polyclinics, nursing homes, general practitioners, uh, general private practitioners. So the private sectors include private hospitals, private polyclinics, nursing homes, general practitioners. Indigenous system we have, uh, uh, you know, listed out multiple times. We have Ayurveda, Yoga, Yunani, Siddha and Homeopathy, which is nothing but Ayush and the quacks, unregistered practitioners, you know, uh, except or not, these people also uh, uh, provide health care to the um, large number of population in the rural areas. They usually visit this uh, quacks and uh, the unregistered practitioners, which are uh, which claim to give uh, health services to the community. Next, we have voluntary health agencies. The voluntary health agencies are the Indian Red Cross, TB Association of India, Hind, Kusht, Nivaran, Sangh, etc. So these are certain voluntary health agencies, Indian Red Cross, TB Association of India and 
हिंद कुश्त नवरन संघ ओके वी हैव दीज वॉलेंट्री हेल्थ एजेंसीज मूविंग ऑन टू द नेशनल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम्स द नेशनल हेल्थ प्रोग्राम्स इज नेशनल टी बी एलिमिनेशन प्रोग्राम नेशनल एड्स कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम नेशनल लेप्रेसी इराडिकेशन प्रोग्राम एंड नेशनल हेल्थ मिशन सो गाइज वॉट आर द नेशनल प्रोग्राम्स नेशनल टी बी एलिमिनेशन सो वी हैव नेशनल टी बी नेशनल टी बी एलिमिनेशन प्रोग्राम वी हैव नेशनल एड्स ओके यू जस्ट रिमेंबर दिस टी बी एलिमिनेशन एट नेशनल टी बी एलिमिनेशन प्रोग्राम एड्स नेशनल एड्स कंट्रोल प्रोग्राम देन थर्ड वन इज लेप्रेसी नेशनल लेप्रेसी इराडिकेशन प्रोग्राम देन नेशनल हेल्थ मिशन okay so this was all about the healthcare delivery system which we listed out now let us see about the public sector in detail so in the public sector what did we have healthcare workers and hospitals uh, under which the village grassroots level we saw followed by uh, district medical colleges insurance and other agencies beginning with the healthcare workers and hospitals at the village level or grassroots levels we have asha worker which is accredited social health activist you can see uh, the asha workers in purple sarees so we have this characteristic color code okay uh, so that they can be identified asha asha worker in this purple sarees and then we have this anganwadi workers in pink sarees okay the anganwadi workers the kids you can see anganwadi okay now uh the village level the grassroots level we have asha <clears throat> accredited social health activist and the village health guide or an assistant ld or tba the local dais or the trained birth attendants after training of the local dais so there are certain people in the rural areas they do not agree to to uh, have this institutional deliveries they will say that they want domiciliary delivery they want the delivery to be conducted in their own homes they do not trust this institutions so in such cases what the government did was the tree uh, the dai the local dai the women okay you can i, I guess there's no picture here uh, okay fine uh, so the dai who is uh, performing these uh, deliveries they are locally training the dai so that she can carry out it in a more uh, you know prof uh, professionalized and more careful way uh, without harming and uh, more hygienic way she can carry out the delivery Uh, so to improve the effectiveness of the healthcare which is provided by this dai we local the local training was given to her so she is coming under the healthcare worker at the village level so the healthcare workers at the village levels who all do we find we have this asha worker asha worker and then anganwadi worker you can see in pink sari anganwadi workers and then uh, we have this trained or uh, trained birth attendants or the local dais moving on to the anganwadi centers where we have uh, the anganwadi workers so guys at the village level grassroots level we have asha village health guide you can see this village health guide this guy and then we have the local dai next anganwadi center anganwadi center we have anganwadi worker under the icds scheme we have this anganwadi workers and uh, next we have the sub center level or the gram arogya kendra okay we have this gram arogya kendra at the sub center level you can uh, see the gram arogya kendra we have next uh, primary health center phc followed by community health center at the block level community health center and the district level uh, district hospital which is the highest level of integration of health service and lastly the medical colleges okay so this is about the public sector so guys clear public sector we saw the village health guide the asha in purple sari pink sari this uh, you know uh, anganwadi worker attained uh, um, Uh, trained birth attendant or the local dai followed by sub center phc chc district hospital and medical college moving on to the insurance scheme so we are done with public sector
in the public sector followed by insurance scheme and other agencies other agencies are the defense hospitals and uh, the railway hospitals the insurance schemes include the esi employee state insurance scheme and we have the life insurance corporation so the life insurance corporations or lic next we have the other agencies which include defense service hospitals and railway hospitals so this was all about the public sector we uh, you know uh, studied in detail about the public sector followed by the private sector private sector includes the private hospitals the poly clinics nursing homes and the general practitioners as uh, you know listed out earlier followed by the indigenous system of medicine ayush which includes ayurveda yoga yunani siddha and homeopathy the quacks or the unregistered practitioners also come under this ayush followed by the voluntary health agencies which is indian red cross society tuberculosis association of india hind kush nivaran sang next we have national health programs in national health programs we saw many that is ntep and nacp nlep leprosy aids tuberculosis nbb dcp rch and nhm all of this will discuss in detail in the next videos and next we have the public health sector healthcare workers and hospitals it is very important for you to know this from your viva point of view and uh, you know to understand uh, the upcoming videos you should be very thorough with this slide so guys let us see public health sector the healthcare workers in the hospital so we have at the village grassroot level what did we see we had village health guide local dai asha so now this village health guide guide which we saw that guy the village health guide per village we will have one person per thousand okay per village or one per 1000 population if there is 1k population one health guide will be there and then you go to local dai per village or one per 1k again the local dai is also so she is a female the local dai she is uh, um, having uh, she is covering 1k population we have one local dai let us have a baby here with her and then we have asha worker per village or one per thousand very simple guys so uh, the village level one per thousand population one village health guide per thousand population one local dai per thousand population one asha worker per thousand population asha worker you can see in the purple sari she'll be okay next we have the anganwadi worker anganwadi worker or anganwadi center we have one anganwadi center for 400 to 800 population so why is there a variation what do they mean by this range 400 to 800 so you can see in the high hilly areas with the population sorry high hilly areas in the hilly areas the population is comparatively low so for the 400 population we have one anganwadi worker whereas in the plain area the population is high that is 800 population we have one so 800 population one uh, anganwadi worker will be assigned or the anganwadi center is formed for about 800 population one anganwadi center it comprises for 800 population the other 800 population we have another anganwadi uh, center and anganwadi worker we have and she, the helper of that anganwadi worker is the sahayaka uh, so the sahayaka is a kannada word right sahayaka help so the sahayaka is uh, the helper who is helping this anganwadi worker anganwadis uh, the color code they have pink pink sari okay fine so this was about the anganwadi center so far what did we study the village level the village level so let's see 1000 population we had one village guide one uh, uh, asha worker and one trained dai or the birth attendant and then we have uh, for 800 population and 400 population in the hilly areas 400 uh, in the plain areas 800 one anganwadi worker 
or the one anganwadi center clear so far we are done moving on to the moving on to the sub center okay sub centers 3000 to 5000 population we have one sub center so guys to understand this you rem uh, you know in the previous video i said you 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 had this box right which we made here the center urban the urban areas we have all the high specialized hospitals uh, private uh, clinics polyclinics and uh, uh, you know um, the specialized centers regional uh, and uh, central hospitals institutions medical colleges all of this is centered in the urban areas so to have an equitable distribution of the health services uh, the government started this chc or one block okay chc or one block in one chc you see in one chc we have okay that's not working okay in one chc we have four divisions okay the four divisions is for phc one chc contains four phc under this the one phc is subdivided into six sub centers 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay six sub centers and the 100 villages okay the 100 villages will together form one block and each village we have one anganwadi center one village will have one anganwadi center clear guys so now let us see now we are going to let us go from last so in the uh, like medical colleges they are uh, at the highest level urban areas and then we have followed by district hospitals community health centers the next higher level in the community health center it is for 80000 to 120000 population uh the community health centers we have specialist like mds ms the physicians surgeons pediatricians gynecologist anesthetist are also found and uh, the community health center is the first referral unit we have discussed about this in a previous video you can see in the playlist of the community health uh, this chapter uh the healthcare of the community chapter and next we have primary healthcare where the population is ranging from 20000 to 30000 population 1 phc 1 phc is for 20k to 30k population and uh, we have a medical officer who has graduated mbbs graduate and then we have 4 phcs under one uh, primary health center okay 4 phcs under one uh chc sorry guys so now uh, i will just uh, take a plain slide and draw everything and explain you so what did we see urban area block that is chc one chc contains four phc and the chc's population is 80k to 1 lakh 20000 population then we had the uh, 100 villages one village will have one anganwadi worker and then uh, this was all and one of uh, one chc will contain four phcs and the population what did we see 20000 to 30000 for the phc clear guys this is all about the health sector health workers in hospitals so let us see sub center six sub centers will form one phc the phc's population 20000 to 30000 next four phcs okay 1 plus 3 okay four phcs together will form one chc the population is 80k to 1 lakh 20000 so i guess this is all clear to you guys and the anganwadi center we have one anganwadi center for one village so all clear uh, now let us see the neat neat entrance pg entrance examination questions all the underlined parts in our videos are the entrance exam questions so we see 
the first question yeah here we have got uh, we have the village health guide or an assistant which is at the village grassroot level he is at the grassroot level and local dai ld or local dai or train birth attendant is also at the village level okay grassroot level then the anganwadi workers are uh, uh, aww stands for anganwadi workers they are under the anganwadi centers pink color code okay next district hospital it is the highest level of integration of health services so they will give you uh, you know the village health guide anganwadi center phc chc and uh, the other option could be sub center which is the highest level of integration first comes sub center then goes phc then comes chc then district hospital so which is the highest level anganwadi okay next anganwadi sa so the highest level highest level is the district district hospitals are the highest level of integration of health services so let us write it again what did we have anganwadi anganwadi next we had sub center primary health center uh then we have a uh, community health center chc followed by district hospitals okay and then medical colleges next we have uh yeah that's all with this we come to an end of the video if you have any doubts put it in the comment section and if you like the video hit the like button and subscribe